Well, I'm Jason Bauer, and I am still currently a member of the River at Orleans County, New York Church, and this is my YouTube channel. I have a Facebook page that these videos are also posted on, as well as videos from other ministers. And this is going to be the new intro video to this channel on YouTube, mainly because I've been getting flooded with a lot of people that want to contradict what I post. But what I post is what the Bible clearly states. And this channel is a study of the Bible according to what it says of itself, in proper context. People argue, well, the, the Bible says this in this verse. Well, if you look at it in the surrounding verses, you'll see the proper context of it. And if you look for the same subject in the rest of the Bible, you're going to see what God says of that subject in proper context. He does not contradict himself. There is no contradiction through the entire span of scriptures. Somebody tells me, well, you argue. Where does it say that the gifts have ended in the Bible? Note the tense, where the gifts have ended. They have not ended. There is no scripture that supports that. But they pointed out, I think it might have been 1 Corinthians chapter 13, love being the greatest gift and everything else is finite and temporary. And they do pass away, but it's when there is a new heaven and a new earth, when we are with God in the fullness of glory, in the glorified body, and all of creation at that point is in him, pure, holy, and undefiled. There is no need for ministerial gifts at that point because everybody there is in perfection. That's what that speaks of. And my recent video at this point in time on the Jewishness of Christianity, its Jewish roots, how it is built on the foundation of the Old Testament. God laid that rock. That rock is the word of God, who is Jesus, the Christ of God. As he says, he and his father are one, and he is the word of God manifest in the flesh. That's in the Gospel of John chapter 1 and chapter 10, verse 30. And he sends the Holy Spirit to us. He had to go up to the Father to send the Holy Spirit to us, that God-breathed word of God to dwell in those who believe. And if they believe, they repent of sin, of wicked ways, and they live unto him. And that's when they receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, when they repent and are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus was baptized to fulfill all righteousness, that outward show, to show this change in ways. Then the Holy Spirit came upon him and he began his ministry. And it's also written, when you fast, when you pray, not if, when. So fasting to get the flesh subdued and praying in the Holy Spirit, these are needed. And somebody argues with me that the New Testament needs to be thrown away, that only the words of Jesus matters. You fool. The Holy Spirit, his ministry is detailed in the letters of the apostles to the church. That's God, the Holy Spirit, proving himself through his people to those who believe. And just as Jesus came and established the gospel, the witness of God the Son, and then the Old Testament from which the apostles and Jesus quoted the witness of God the Father to the earth. And so these three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are evident in the scriptures in their specific ministries. And the Holy Spirit reinforcing the words of Jesus and the words of God the Father in demonstration. And these are not empty words. I myself have seen the power of God in my own life and being healed. I no longer need glasses to read, to drive, to do pretty much anything. I have been healed of plantar facetus, a permanent affliction from what doctors say, where the arches of my feet collapse. They are painful, flat-footed, that I'm going to need these hardened arch supports for life. I've been healed of that. I can walk around on my bare feet. I don't need those things anymore. I wear these like flexible shoes that are like water shoes all the time. They're comfortable. They're great. And, uh, I don't need those things anymore, and that's just the small things I myself have experienced. I've seen deliverance happen. I've had devils cast off of me before, and that was that was something else, too. What you see in the Bible is still happening, and the book of Acts is still entirely relevant, as are the letters of the church and the description of the gifts of the Holy Spirit and their operation and their necessity. And 
Somebody was saying that one of the apostles is actually the Antichrist, which contradicts the book of Revelation, and 1st and 2nd Thessalonians deal with the end times, and so does the book of Revelation, and this points back to Daniel the prophet, speaking of that time of tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble, which has not happened yet. Israel has been reformed as a nation, and the nations of the world are turning against them, even the United States at this point in time. And Israel stands alone during that time of the tribulation. That way they have no one else to rely upon but God. They have to repent and turn back to him. And then Jesus returns with his church to retake God's possession, as detailed in the book of Revelation. So... Everything that the Bible teaches is true. There is no contradiction in its entire span. And these studies detail this. This is what this channel is for. Just stating plainly the words of the Bible and what it says of itself. No personal interpretation of it, what it plainly says. Despite the arguments of fools that have not studied it diligently, they outright reject things, they go with what somebody else says, they parrot to me their indoctrination, and they bark like a bunch of angry dogs when I have anything to say against it. So, at this point, I haven't done this yet with my channel, but there is options I can utilize to block other channels and to delete comments. And if this continues, I am going to start utilizing this, because these people do not see reason. They don't look to the scriptures. That's becoming very clear. So, this isn't a theological or philosophical debate. This here is to contradict all those false ministers that foist their own deceptions upon people who are unlearned. They don't know the truth, and these people put out their own doctrines rather than the doctrine of God. They are powerless. They don't know his power to deliver and heal and save. But I have. And I'm going to keep shooting those sacred cows with what the Bible plainly says and what has been demonstrated and lived in my own life. And this isn't a personal slant on the Bible. This is a personal testimony that the Bible is true 100%. It's too bad that some of you can't handle it. And as I've stated before, if you want a channel where your ears get tickled, you're not going to find it here. Unsubscribe and go elsewhere. Because if you keep vomiting out your vile, foolish lies and deceptions here, I will block you and I will delete you. Just to put it plainly. That pretty much covers it. And there are scriptures to back this up. Like, one of the books that a certain person told me is a total lie, but it's demonstrated truth also. This is the Apostle John, who knew Jesus, and he wrote the book of Revelation. Chapter 4, verse 24. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. By this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit who he has given us. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that does not confess Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist. Those who deny the ministry of Jesus, the ministry of God, his Holy Spirit, because Jesus Christ is salvation and anointing. The Holy Spirit is the anointing of God in the believer, setting them apart, marking them as God's child, and equipping them for every good word and work, as according to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, to be adequately equipped for the ministry. So, this is the Spirit of God the Father, the Spirit, the very same Spirit that was upon God the Son, the Word of God, the God-breathed Word of God, when he ministered. So, these three are one. That is scriptural. That is in the Bible if you look it up. Although I'm probably going to be told, well, that's not right either. Well, it'll be plainly evident, anyway. And this is the Spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard is coming, and already is now in the world. You are of God, little children. You have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. 
He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So, obedience is by faith. Verse 20 of chapter 4. So that was chapter 24 where it started in chapter 3. So yeah, this is chapter 4 that I just read, verses 1 through... 1 through 6. So going to verse 20 of chapter 4. If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother who he has seen, how can he love God who he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, he who loves God must love his brother also. So here somebody is saying that the apostles are not legitimate or not valid, that they are somehow anti-Christ. But their teachings, they teach about the Holy Spirit and the necessity of abiding in the Holy Spirit, praying in the Holy Spirit, living a holy, pure, undefiled life that is in agreement with the words of Jesus. And Jesus even says, if you take the words of Jesus seriously, who are my brothers and my sisters? Those who hear the word of God and do them. As these here, these apostles, have and so do the modern Christians at this day. And when I say modern, I mean like recent times. Even at the time of the posting of this video, the they who live holy, pure lives, actually, according to the instructions of the Bible, they don't just insist upon it, they actually do according to the instructions. And I'm going to put this forward too. I go door to door with the River Church at Orleans County, New York. We evangelize in the community, and people have prayed for salvation with me. And if you argue, well, that's not in the Bible. Well, another book of the Bible, which you argue against and say is no longer relevant or valid. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 through 13. He who confesses Jesus as Lord and believes in his heart or her heart that God has raised him from the dead shall be saved. And whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, and those who trust in him will not be disappointed. So, that right there, confessing and believing. And then, at that point, you need to do according to the instruction of God, which is why the Gospel of John and the first epistle of John are the best reading for the new Christian, because it puts things plainly. Even the book of James is a letter to baby Christians teaching on holiness and purity, not just having a mere appearance, but actually doing according to the instruction, which is so very critical. So, as you can see here, these people lay it out plainly. They elaborate on Jesus' ministry, that it needs to be applied, not just heard. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of God, but it's also written, Faith without works is dead, just as works without faith is likewise dead. Faith is actually doing. The just shall live by faith. And as I've stated before, the English Bibles aren't the only language. They're definitely not the true language. English sucks compared to other languages. English is a generalized language of very few words that could have a broad meaning. But the meaning that is broad is also vague. It could be interpreted according to anyone's narrative. It's why it is so inaccurate. The original languages, Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic, specific words conveyed specific ideas. And with the Hebrew and the Greek, this also depends on the arrangement of the words in a sentence. And the writing of the Bible, as inspired by God, is very specific for very precise meaning in what it conveys. And also, the letters and characters of the Greek and the Hebrew also have numerical value. And yes, as I've stated before, certain words do have multiple meanings, but it's to convey a multifold message according to the inspiration of God. And it is all good for edification. And it's not a confusing thing. At least for those who are saved and have the Holy Spirit. If you're confused by what the Bible says, you don't have the Holy Spirit because God is not the author of confusion. And that also is in the New Testament, in the books that you reject, saying that they are no longer valid. And so, God is truth, as Jesus says. Truth does not have confusion in it. 
Truth knows. Confusion does not. Truth is lack or truth is not lacking. Confusion is lacking. Truth does not lack. Lack is not of God. God adequately supplies over and abundantly. Pressed down, shaken together, running over. Does he put pour good measure into those who are his? So you are of a different spirit from what the Bible talks about. It isn't the Holy Spirit that you have. Seeing how you're trying to cut apart the Bible and throw pieces of it away that you don't like, you are not of God, whoever you are. And this is to multiple people, not just one, but this is addressing some things that have come up to me recently. And so, as for the goals of this ministry, the River Church at Orleans County, New York, is accelerating quickly in these things. As it is, I will continue to work with them at this point in time. I have no idea what's down the road, but my intention is to keep evangelizing, to keep preaching and teaching the Word of God, and continuing on in this way, the way and the truth and the life who Jesus is, according to his great commission and according to his holy, righteous standard. The church in Christ does not compromise with the world. To compromise is to be a defeated foe. This is a war against the devil and those who throw in with him. Even though the devil had taken the possession God gave Adam and Eve, his children, he's coming to take it back. God is still on the throne over all creation, and the devil is under the feet of the church. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, the devil is under your feet and you should be living in victory. And if the devil is the head of the enemy forces, that means the rest of them are under your feet as well. There shouldn't be any trouble at all. You should be living in the authority that God gave you. God gave you all authority. Speak to the mountain and it will move. All those are plainly stated in the Bible. So, hopefully this clarifies some things, at least for some of you. As Jesus said, if you hear my words and do not obey them, there is one who judges you, the very words that I spoke. By your words you are justified, and by your words you are condemned. And... Matthew chapter 25, that parable of the bridesmaids, five were wise, five were foolish. They all claimed to know God, but all of them insisted that they did works for him. But half of them were rejected when the time came and they knocked on Christ the door that he may open up to them that they can come into his abode. He rejected them. I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of lawlessness. When you are rejecting the word of God, you're advocating for sin. You are advocating for rebellion. There's things you don't like that are written in the scriptures that are part of his holy requirement for you. And if you're rejecting it, you're rejecting him. That's what the Bible also plainly states. So, he is the only way to go. So, hopefully, that helps clarify some things. So, confess with your mouth, Jesus says, Lord, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Be sure to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That way, you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and you can begin to live a righteous, holy life as a person unto his glory, not to man. Reject the doctrines of men. Reject falsehoods. Test the spirits. All those are clipped very plainly in the scriptures. So, if you're not trying to, well, cut them out of your Bible. So, God bless you. Hope that helps you.